Thank you very much, um, Loretta. Thank you for putting this together. Thank you for the hard work behind the scene to make sure that this is holding today and also to every of GPI staff for putting this together. All right. Um, I'm back again. Yes, I'm back again. And I hope you have done the um, assignment or the classwork. No, it's not my assignment, it's the classwork of sketching, um, of having a sketch of what social media and human trafficking means to you. Yes. So please, um, if you have done it, kindly share with us what you have done. Okay, has anybody done it? Kindly share with us what you have done. Any sketch you have or image um, about social media and human trafficking, the way you understand it. Okay, can we have anyone share with us what they have? Should I call names? Okay, I think I have to call names. Um, Aisha, do you have anything to show us? Blessing, Teresa, anything to show us? I believe that we, we, we have done something amazing. You know. Okay. Yeah, you can see you clearly. So this is my own diagram of human trafficking. This is the human which they have placed a price on a price wow. on so yeah i'm still wow. trying to draw the social media ones so when i try this is amazing please let's let i don't know if have we have we have we, have, have we learned the gpi clap we need to learn it because this 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 deserves gpi clap do we know the gpi clap thank you so much aisha this is amazing we need to clap for you thank so you. everyone we are going to clap for um, Aisha. And Aisha, as we are clapping for you, we want you to put on your video because you are going to dance. Do you ah. understand? You are going to dance. Yes. So we want to see you, you dancing. Yes. So put on your video and put it in a position that we are going to see you dance. Okay, I'm coming back. All right. We, are, we will wait for you. You deserve this clap. I hope every other person is warming up to show us you know, what social media and human trafficking means to you in a chat, like in a caricature, just show it was the way you understand it. Aisha, are you ready? I'm ready, ma'am. Yes. All right. So put on your video. We want to start. So this is GPI Club Education. Please, I want, I want, I want uh, everybody to participate in this. So it's education, empowerment. Action. You have done well. So when we start, you are going to dance. Are you ready, Aisha? Now you, let's go together. Education. Empowerment. Action. You have done well. Aisha, we didn't see you dance, so we didn't see you. We didn't see you. <laughs> We didn't see you. This is the last time. Education, empowerment, action. You have done well. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you. All right. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, we are going to, who, who, is, who is next? Who, who has their chat or image available next? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Aisha has paved the way. Come on, let's see. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Hi. Okay, yeah, uh, go ahead. Wow, wow. This, okay. this is a, a family, a woman okay. that went to pick a, um, a, a daughter from someone in the village. And here wow. is she and her children eating together while the little girl is here doing the astros cleaning without giving her food and mm. still maltreating her. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. This is this is amazing. Man, you guys are you ladies are brilliant. Like seriously, you are so so brilliant. Wow. Please bless me. We need to clap for you, the GPI club, and we want you to dance. So we want to <laughs> we want to put the spotlight on you. We want to put the spotlight on you, you know. So everybody, please unmute your mic so that we can all clap this GPI club for bless. She has this is really amazing. Eh? Okay, let's go. Education. <laughs> Empowerment. Action. You have done well. Thank you. Thank you. Blessing. Okay. Yes. The momentum is gathering. It's gathering. I love this. We are very engaged. Okay. So um, who's next? Who's going next? Who's going next? Who is going next? Okay. Who's next? Should I call someone? Therese, Kingsley, Odia, are you ready? Joyce, are you ready? Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? If you are ready, you can have the floor now. Can you see what blessing and um, Aisha did? Like, it's so, it's a caricature, but it's so, so beautiful. Like, the explanation behind it is just so amazing. All right. So, um, Therese, do you have something for us? Okay. What about Joyce? Joyce, do you have something for us? Are you ready to show us what you have done? It doesn't have to be to be perfect, you know. So we just want you to, you know, have something that you, you know, have as your own understanding concerning the subject matter. Okay. Okay. Is is Joyce here? Is Joyce here? Joyce, can I hear you? If you don't have, if you don't have it, just let me know. Um, also, Therese, if you don't have it, let me just know. If you are still working on it, let me know. You can unmute your mic and just say, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And so that we can move, you know, ahead because this is a critical part of the program. And we don't we want everybody to, you know, have something that has been done. Okay. so. Joyce, working on it. Teresa, are you there? All right. Okay. Um, while I believe that probably they stepped um, away from their phone for the meantime, um, we'd like to go ahead, not to waste our time. Um, and we are going for um, an, a kind of icebreaker right now while we are waiting for other people to you know do their own class work and so that they can share what they've done with us like i said it doesn't have to be something perfect all right um i think loretta wants to say something all right loretta you can have the floor please okay thank you blessing and aisha oh, please can you um show the diagram again let's take a screenshot of it thank Thank you. We'll go with Blessing first. I remember Aisha said she wasn't through with her diagram, but she just showed us what she had sketched. So Blessing, if you don't mind, let's just see it. So we'll take a screenshot of this. Offi, over to you. Thank you, Rosa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Offi, have made a spotlight of it. Okay, has it been snapped? Okay. Yes, I've taken a screenshot of this one. Okay. Um, Thank you, Messi. Okay, can Aisha I'm also. Coming. Um, Please, look, I'm coming. I'm coming. All right. Just give me. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. I've gotten thank this you. one as well. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so right about now. Okay, so let me just ask Joyce and um, Joyce and Teresa, have you uh, are you done with yours? Are you done uh, with your okay? So Joyce, all right. Go okay, ahead, so let me okay, so I don't know if you can see it. Okay, we can't see it, you can. Okay. okay, so the first uh, phase has a happy face or something. It shows like, like I'm trying to come off of the part, the part where um, traffickers, people who are like most likely to be vulnerable to be trafficked, like what goes through their head, like, oh, it's just a means to escape poverty, impoverishment, you know, when they endure racism, mental disorder, and victimization. And then what they actually face when, you know, when they are being trafficked, you know, things like sexual assault, malnourishment, psychological and social effects and the need for them to like, oh, I think I was better off than, you know, now that I'm being trafficked. So I think this is my understanding of social, sorry, of human trafficking, how I see it. Thank yeah. you so much. This, Thank is, you so this is beautiful. Can you, can you make it um, horizontal? Uh, yes. 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 Yes, this. Yes, this. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope you're yeah. so, This is this is more like a, a before and after effect. The way yeah. it is. The person thinks that I'm going to escape poverty and my, I'm going to have a better future. I'm going to have, um, I have hope. I'm going to have a better life. And at the end of the day, the person faces a lot of psychological social effects. I mean, come on, come on. Like, this is mind blowing. Oh my God. I have brilliant ladies in this room. Okay, Joyce, don't put up your camera yet. No, 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 no. We want to clap okay. for you. And we are going to see you dance. I know you are probably in the office, but please just yes, put this to yourself. All right. So you are going to shake your body, you know, because we have to celebrate this brains and beauty. Okay, let's go. Education. Empowerment. Action. You are done well. Thank you. That's so brilliant. Thank you so much, Joy. All right. Um, okay. I believe that um of young you are able to take that screenshot. Um all right. Um, who has not done this yet? Teresa. Okay, Teresa, can we have you now? Are you ready for us? Oh, you are still working on it. Okay. I believe that Teresa is still working on it. Um, oh, I'm still working all right. on it. Teresa is ready for us. Okay, you're welcome. You can have the floor now. No, please. I'm still working on it. Okay, no, I will, all the time. We, you have the time because I know that you are going to give us something that is mind blowing. So we don't want to cut that creative flow. Okay, um, I have two people just joining us. You are welcome, um, Oniga Agnes. Um, I want you to. You're welcome, and we want you to introduce yourself by way of your full name, your location, and an adjective to describe who you are. All right, so Oniga, you can have the floor right now. Thank you. Okay, is Oniga here? All right, I think I have um, a user by name Williams also. You're welcome, please um, kindly introduce yourself by way of your full name, your location, and an adjective to describe yourself. You can have the floor, please. Okay. Um, uh, okay, yes. Good morning, please. everyone. Okay. Okay, we can see you. We can see you. Go ahead, please. We can see you. 
Okay, um, Princess UK Williams and location being city other state. I've just used to describe myself awesome. Awesome. You look you like actually I'm... look awesome. You look awesome. Thank you so much for joining in. Um okay, um while I wait for um Oniga to, to come in, we would just like you to do a little um, class assi- class work. Um, you need to just do a sketch of, or draw a, an image of what social media and human trafficking means to you. So just a caricature, something that just represents what social media and human trafficking means to you, okay? And you're going to share it with us in, in the next, next few minutes. All right, so the floor for Oniga. Kindly introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Can see you on the move. Thank you for joining in. Yeah. Hello, my we can, we can, yes, we can, yes, we can, can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay. Hi, my name is Sonika Agnes. All right, you're welcome. Your location? And I am from Cross River. Okay. Cross River State. All right, you're welcome. Okay, what adjective describes you? Thank you. What adjective describes you, please? I am a, a practice person. You say? Yes, what adjective describes you? Okay, I think there's a little bit of network destruction there. Okay, um, we we stopped at what adjective describes you, Oniga. You can just um, send a message to the chat room to, you know, tell us what adjective describes you. All right, now to Williams. Okay, or oh, is Joyce ready? Is okay. No, I think Joyce has done as Teresa. Yes, Teresa, please. Are you ready for your presentation? Yes, I am. All right, please go ahead. Okay. You are muted. Okay, we can't see your video or your... Okay, all right. Now we can see you. Okay. Okay, so... I don't know if you can see my diagram. Definitely, we can see it. Okay, so yes, someone, a guy or a lady who meets or convinces someone, could be a boy or a girl too, about an offer, leaving the country, wants to help the person with his education, and then they travel, arrive at destination, and everything changes. The person is introduced to drug or is trafficked sex traffic, use for household chores, or also the person may be kidnapped too, and then that's it. Wow, wow, wow. This is, this, this is amazing. Thank you so, so much. I mean, this is just like the journey. It's just representing the journey, you know, through sex and um, through human trafficking. Thank you so much, Teresa. This is amazing. And you deserve a GPI clap. So you need to put the spotlight on yourself while we clap for you and we want you to shake your body you know so are you ready Teresa? are you ready uh, i think so okay so education uh, you are not dancing no you are you must dance oh, others that have gone ahead of you have danced you must dance you must shake your oh. body oh. education empowerment Action. Uh, no, we have to start again. You are not dancing. You must shake your body. 
you must shake at least just shake your body you know shake okay. your body to the I'm shaking my body can you see the way you're shaking your body no way <laughs> education <laughs> empowerment action you have done well thank you so much Teresa. that was beautiful thank, thank you so you. much for sharing all right so we head straight to williams williams are you ready for us not at all i don't know what oh. to draw oh you do you you should get inspiration i know you 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 catch up don't worry um just just take your time um and just think you know you the inner oh. genius in you is going to come up yeah so you said what i have a question all right please go ahead i have a question go ahead please go ahead please uh, i i took a picture of human trafficking. Can I show the picture? Can you what? Show the picture. Can you share a picture, right? Yes, I took a picture of, of a t-shirt I saw on human trafficking. Okay, all right. Okay, Th that's from the internet, right? No, it, it, it's a t-shirt I saw with someone. I'm wearing one of them right oh, now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, we want so we want the, the we want it to originate from you. So we don't we, we don't want uh, we want what you understand by it. So we Actually, want. I to... would like I would like to take a picture or screenshot of the T-shirt. I think it's okay if he shares it. Please let's see the picture you took. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm coming. Okay. You said you want to show us a picture of your t-shirt. If you see something, say something. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Definitely, definitely. Yes, if you see something, say something. Definitely. Thank you so much, Williams, for yeah, sharing that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we we'll, we are still you. expecting your own creativity. We want to tap into the wealth okay. of your creative juice. So, we are still expecting that special okay. picture from you, special representation of what, um, what, you know, human trafficking and social media means to you. All right, um, somebody joined in. Sally, Rachel, can you introduce yourself? Um, your name, where your your location, and an adjective to describe you. Go ahead, this. Is Rachel here? Yes, please. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ali Rachel Iniki, and um, I am a volunteer with GPI Girl Power Initiative. And in the position of operations, assistant operations officer, currently in Abuja, I'm at the office right now, as we speak. So thank you very much. Right. So what's the, an adjective to describe you? Okay, I'm um, enthousi enthusiastic. I don't know. Yeah. Enthusiast. All right, that's great. Yeah, thank thanks. you so much for joining me. Thank, thank you for you. the back end job. All right, so we quickly go into um, a short break. Um, and by in, in this break, we are not leaving this chat room. We are actually going to engage in one or two Okay, um, Loretta wants to say something. Go ahead, please. Loretta, you okay, can have the There's floor. someone who, who joined us. Okay, thank you, Monke. There's someone who joined us uh, and we renamed you, please, your name to us, the Emperor. We don't know who you are. Please, can you introduce yourself? Thank you. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Please go ahead, introduce yourself. Okay, um, Emperor, right? 
please, um, if you go by the name Emperor, kindly um, introduce yourself. If you are with your phone. Okay, um, while we wait for the person to... Uh, unmute your mic. Unmute your mic, please. We cannot hear you. Your Good mic. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good morning. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. We can hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, we can't hear you. The, the, the network is breaking the call. We can't hear you. Um, Okay, I think the person would rejoin us. Um, he's trying to fix his network. All right, so let's um, somebody give us, lead us in a session of um, ice breaking. Okay, I think um, Emperor is back online. Okay, so we are, we are waiting for you. All right, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Yes, please. Thank you. We can't hear you very well. Um, I think that you can um, send your details, your name, your location, and your analytic to describe you, you can send it via message, and I'm going to read it out to everyone, so that we don't, um, we don't delay ourselves. Thank you so much, Emperor, for joining in. All right, so somebody to kindly lead us in an, uh, the highest breaking session. So I believe this is going to be interesting. All right. So who is the volunteer? Volunteer. Who is going to volunteer to lead us in an icebreaking session? Just one or two persons is fine. Okay. Blessing. Do you have an icebreaker for us? Yes. Blessing, do you have an icebreaker for us? Aisha, Joyce, Therese, do you have an icebreaker for us? Let's go. Who's, who's got it? Who's got it? Who's got it? I've mentioned names, so ha. Oh yeah, oh. let's 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 get this going. Let's get this rolling. Let's get this rolling. Aisha, do you have an icebreaker for us. When you say an icebreaker, please, what do you mean? I don't understand. Oh, I I'm so sorry. Can I, can I have one? Okay. Can I have one? Okay. 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 If there's anyone who can say this word five times very fast, what can pan tropicana? What can Okay, you say it ten times very fast. So I'll try. I hope I can. I'm tired already. Any other person? Aha. Let's go. Who's gonna do this? Aha. Waka Pine Tropicana. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Blessing, you have the floor. Come on. I believe in you. I believe in Tropicana. Waka Pine 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 Tropicana. Show us your face. Just show us your face. We want to see your beautiful face. I see how we're it. All right. 
Waka pine tropicana, 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 waka pine tropicana. Saba. Wow. Hey. Hey, who is going to beat blessing to this? She said it several times. <laughs> who is going to beat her? To this? Yes. Yes. Let's 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 have that person go. Another person, who is going to be, are we going to give blessing the champion now? Okay, Williams, do this. I believe in you. Don't believe in me. Ah, okay. Uh, okay I take so. off my belief. No, no, don't be like that. You've already believed in me. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm done. I can't go now. <laughs> the battle is the battle is between Williams and Blessing. Okay, now we want to see who is gonna take this championship. All right, one more contestant, and we, we draw the line. One more contestant, one more contestant. Who's going to be the winner of this challenge? Come on, who's going to, who's going to be the winner? One more participant for this Wakampine Tropicana Wakanda Forever. Okay, Teresa, go girl. I believe in you. You have the floor, Teresa. Let's see. Okay. Sorry, please. What are we saying exactly? Wakampine Tropicana. Sorry? Wakampine Tropicana. Okay. All right. Ten times, please. Fast. Ten times. Okay. Waka pine tropicana, 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 waka pine tropicana. Waka pine tropicana. I don't know. I'm dancing. Come on, give it to them. I've said like ten times already. Really, it's so interesting. Hey, now I don't know who the winner is. Who will judge this? Who will judge this? This matter. Who will judge this matter? I don't know who the winner is. I'll leave it to Loretta to judge, you know, who gets the championship, you know, medal for this session. All right. Thank you so much for, you know, engaging. It's been amazing. It's been interesting having every one of you, you know, in this room, you know, and sharing knowledge and, of course, having fun. Okay, um, Williams, are you ready to show us um, what you've done? Um, your sketch, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to show us? Okay, Teresa, uh, you are raising up your hands. Almost, almost there. All right. There. All right, Teresa, you are raising up your hands. You want to say something? Oh, no, no. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Okay, right about now, I would be um, calling on a facilitator for today. She is the, and I'll be reading our profile. I'll be reading our profile. And while I read our profile, I want you to join me, you know, in welcoming her. She's amazing and she has you know, been on this work for the past, you know, eight years, eight solid years, bettering the life of people, especially women and girls. Loretta Enofe Laurel is the convener of the SM for SC series, a UN Women Benjamin Plus 25 Eaglet, and the head of programs GPI Abuja. She has eight years of experience programming on human trafficking prevention and trained in the stakeholder engagement for the implementation of the UN Convention Transnational Organized Crime. 
UNTOC. She works closely with adolescents and young persons and is passionate about their well being and development. She's rec she recognizes the potential and energy they possess, but when these are harnessed with skills, resources, and opportunities, they can mobilize on a course to drive social change. And this is our speaker for today, our facilitator for today. She'll be taking us on the topic, introduction to the concept of trafficking in persons and migration. With a round of applause, I want us to welcome on board Loretta and Nofel. Laurel, thank you so much for being here. I can't hear our clap too. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, you can have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. It's a thank pleasure you. being with you. It's an honor, actually. And actually, we should be outdoor and we're doing this icebreaker. Possibly, we would have done some more physical activity, but we have to do it. We have to use what we have. It's online. Okay, thank you. And it's been a pleasure getting to know us here yeah, where we come from. But I would still like to make a request for um, the person who couldn't speak. Okay, it's out of the room. He didn't get his name. And I was hoping we'll get to hear from him. Okay, thank you, everyone. And it's a pleasure being here with all of you. Please, without start, I would like all of us to show our sketches. So we have a group photograph of our sketch. If you don't mind, the next three minutes, let's take a quick photograph of our sketches, please. Um, we had a um, sketch from Blessing, from Therese, from J Joyce, from Aisha, and from Williams. Yeah, I think, yeah, I got it. Please, can we, can we just show our sketches? Okay, Williams didn't show us a sketch. He showed us a picture. So let's, let's, let's see our sketches. Please, Williams, even though you're not done with it, just show to us, please. Just show us your sketches. Thank you. Okay, um, Therese, we can't see your sketch yet. Okay. We Williams, can you turn your picture um, vertically, please? It's horizontal. Okay, Joyce, please, can you make yours vertical too? Thank you. Thank you. So, Ofi, please, can you do a group photograph of this? Thanks. I can't. I don't know. The lag is causing everything to just be black. Okay, I've done this for my end. Okay, thank you very much. We can we can keep the pictures now. Thank you. Okay, as um. From, your, from the pictures that you guys have all shown, it shows that we have basic understanding of what human trafficking is, and that pleases me. So it's also helped my work go very fast and easy, hopefully. So I'll be sharing my screen with us now. Okay, so my work today is very easy. It's to introduce us to the concept of trafficking in persons and migration. This slide is adapted from, um, from 
Sarah Ronnie Binadolo, who is the GPI's National Liaison Officer and Executive Secretary of NACTAL FCT. She did the honors of playing this slide, and I'm using it to present for today. Okay, so the objective for today's session, three objectives actually, is to introduce all of us to the concept of trafficking in persons, to know the prerequisites for safe migration, and to gain knowledge on online sex trafficking and identify signs of grooming. So I'd like to ask us, from our own understanding, what is trafficking in persons? What is human trafficking? Is it, we hear the term modern slavery. Is it, is it the same thing as trafficking in persons? Let's, we are not many in the house, so we can actually um, unmute ourselves. And as far as you know, your background is quiet. So you can unmute yourself. Anybody? Uh -uh, how about okay, now? so yeah. <laughs> okay, so you said um trafficking in person, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's like the um illegal movement of a person. So it could be through force, like deception, or yeah, through force or deception, and it's mostly done just to exploit the person's labor or yes. I think that's the basic idea behind trafficking the person. Trafficking the person. Okay. Thank you very much, Pause. Okay, any other person? We'll just take one more, then we'll continue with the session. Okay. Blessings, go ahead, please. Okay, since nobody is, so to save time, we'll continue the session. Okay, thank you very much, Joyce, for sharing. So trafficking in persons, according to UNTOC, which is the UN Convention on Transnational Organized Crime, it says that trafficking in persons is the act of recruitment, transportation, or you transfer, or you harbor, or you receive persons by either by means of either threats, or you use force, or you coerce the person, or you abduct the person. I think um, somebody showed kidnapping in one of the um, pictures. You abduct the person, you use uh, either means of fraud or deception, or you use power, or a position of vulnerability, or giving a, or receiving payment or benefits to achieve the consent of a person, having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. All this pentagram, I'm going to break it down in, as the session goes on. But if you can see here, in highlighted in yellow, there are three major elements for trafficking to have said to have taken place. There has to be an act. The act means what? So the act means whether you, the act, there has to be a means. The means refers to how was it done? Act what was done means how was it done? Then the purpose is why was it done? So in trafficking, there's only one purpose. And the purpose is exploitation. In any way you address the purpose, so I will give my money small. I will come pay and back later. As far as act means is there and the purpose of exploitation, that means trafficking has taken place. So it only one sole purpose, which is exploitation. So let's look at the element of trafficking. Let's break it down now. We said an act. The act is for what? What? What was done? What is done? So this is what it is here. In the act, for every trafficking that's been taking place, is either done through what is is done through what recruitment, whereby recruitment in the sense that 
um, I go to a from blessings diagram. Okay, no blessings shows. Okay, there was no diagram of the book. I go somewhere now, now, and I tell somebody that. I mean, of us know what recruitment is. Let me make it. Let me get your percent, your understanding of recruitment. Many of us know what recruitment is. Anybody who wants to share what recruitment is. So let's all unmute our mics. So you just speak as you. Okay. Um, so many I want to, to share what recruitment is. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, recruitment is a process of finding, um, hiring, look, looking for people or candidates for a particular occasion or event or job. Thank you very much. Looking for candidates or looking for persons. Thank you. So we all know what transportation is. You know what transfer is. What about harboring? Anybody? Harboring is um keeping keeping someone in a, in a place even without um the person's permission, but you just want to, uh, or even knowing the situation that leads to. What brought the person there? But you just want to harbor the person and and keep keep him or her without his or her permission. That's what I understand. So, so we all and we know what receipt is. Receipt means to receive. So, for the act, for us to describe the traffic act means that you might have either recruited somebody, as Williams has explained to us. You go, you go and tell people. If somebody goes to a village now, say, ah, to tell, I'm going to take people, I'm going to take um, persons into um, have better work for people in Lagos, or there's a work for you that's where you come from in Saudi Arabia. You are going to get this, you are going to get that, you are going to even get health insurance, your visa, and everything is going to be smooth. So, when you go looking for persons, looking for persons, you are recruiting them. Then, transportation moving from one place to another. So, transportation takes place, then there's transfer. We transfer the person, one person to another. Then we have harboring, keeping as shadows. Then there is six. When it comes to the PCC, and it goes on along. Fetch the means. The means says, how is this done? How is it done? Is it done through using force, like threatening the person, by coercing, like, oh, don't worry, making the person feel a level of trust, trusting you. By the end of the day, what your intentions are different. Or by abducting, then use of fraud, then abuse of power. Because I can say, oh, because I'm your mother, I said, you have to go there and you have to travel and do this kind of work. And I don't have a power to say no. I, don't, I can't counter your power because the power dynamics, abuse of power, or a position of vulnerability. And I say, oh, we are just here dying now. If you don't come, if you don't come for me to help you, you just remain in this state. See, or everybody in your family will just speak. There's no Gary, there's no water. I keep living in misery, in suffering. So looking at the person's level of vulnerability, the person's lowest state, I abuse that. Or I give or receive payments or benefits. When I give money to somebody or to somebody to bring somebody and things like that, or benefit or benefits. The let's now look at the purpose. What is the purpose? It's exploitation. There's no, there's no two purpose for trafficking. It's exploitation to the highest order. I don't know if someone can explain, explain exploitation in, in what in the way it means to them. Exploitation. You can unmute, just speak as as any thought that comes. To, there's no wrong or right answer. Please, that's our grand rules. There's no wrong or right answer. Say it, to you, say it as it comes to you. We're all yelling in together. Please go ahead, Williams. Taking complete advantage of someone or their assets, utilizing it to the best of your effort without any regard. Okay. 
or their person or who they are. Let's ask this, us this question. Thank you, Williams. Let's ask, have you ever heard this term, monkey the walk, babu the chop? Yes, yes. Yes, ma. Head of it. Yes. So can you can somebody use it to um relate what you should my mean from that? Hey. Uh it means um forcing someone into or sending someone to to a job or send forcing someone into something and into an act that the person is not willing to do and collecting the the funds or receiving all the benefit that is coming from the person instead of the person receiving it but you that sent him there will be receiving all the benefit. Okay. Thank you very much. So we can see expectation in that summary, in that description. So when you think of expectation, just think of our local balance fund and give your work to the shop. And you can, you can easily relate it to what trafficking is. And when we talk of trafficking, And when we speak on, on trafficking, trafficking can be in three folds. It either can be for sex exploitation, for forced labor, organ trafficking, and other forms. But before we go ahead to that, let's look at internal trafficking, the types of trafficking we have. We have trafficking that are internal, and we have trafficking that is external. For a trafficking that is internal, it happens within the national borders, within the borders of the states. States, I'm talking of states in terms of country right now. So when we have trafficking that is within a state level, within a country level, within the boundaries of a country, is internal trafficking. What we'd say a trafficking that goes outside the borders of the country, it becomes external trafficking. Just where when you do migration, it's specifically internal migration, you migrate from one state to the other. Then in external trafficking, you migrate from outside um, the country. External, external migration migrate from within your country to another country. That's the same way it can be related to internal and external trafficking. Now you also have a new, very new form of trafficking that has gone beyond borders. I like to describe it as trafficking beyond borders. That will refer to as virtual trafficking, online trafficking, cyber sex trafficking. From, I want us to think now, when we mention trafficking, from what we've described from the elements of trafficking, I will say internal trafficking. Do you think there's internal trafficking happening in Nigeria? Yes, ma'am. Anybody who let's unmute our mic. Okay. Yes. How? Yeah. Anybody wants to explain how? Okay, ma'am. Um, okay, so information you've gotten from the past. Okay. So the one that takes place within the um within the country is like when you take a child from the village and take the child to the city, just like exploit the child, make the child do um, jobs for you. Like, or maybe when you lie to the parent of the child that you are going to give the child an education when she comes to the city with you. But when, when she comes to the city, you turn out to your own self. Something like that. Okay. okay. And also to contribute to um, that. I want to say something. Go ahead, let me. And also to contribute to what she said, so I'm, so I'm say, okay, I need a child to help me for us just fine. Some parents are willing to do that or to help me to sell in the shops. I have a dressing shop. I have a restaurant bar and all that. Getting there is not selling in the restaurant bar anymore. They turn the child into a sex trafficker on the, in the bar. It's not what they told the child that the child is doing anymore. So they do the same sex trafficking in 
that same within um, internal internal environment, even without people knowing, but it depends on the the person and the client. And the next thing is to stressing the, the child and say, if you speak out, I'm going to kill you or you are going to suffer and all that. So okay. it's yeah. Thank you very Thank you very much, Blessing. I would like us to pick out elements from Blessing's description now. She said, they go to the village and they tell the parents. Can we see the act that took place there? What act is yes. there? If you, if you listen carefully, you will see recruitment taking place there. Um, are you with me? Yes. Did we also get to see recruitment taking place yeah. there? And yes. we also have transformation or transfer. Yeah. Transferring the child from where the parent is located or transporting the child to another place. Then we saw deception. They are told, mm -hmm. they are told the parent about the, uh, they'll take the child to school or something. And eventually the child is being deceived, doing something different than exploitation. So you can see sometimes from the different scenarios we see every day for what we see within our close environment that those men looking at this those men looking at it we are not able to identify it as a form of trafficking but when we like when we decide to break it down in terms of the different elements it will help us identify a case of trafficking being taken place so we can so in trafficking central trafficking as say can happen across national borders you can see between from rural in most times you see between from rural to urban Moving from rural settings to the urban, even within the urban, even within the urban cities too. We also have urban to urban. You can move maybe for those who in Lagos, you move from Ikeja to to VI. Oh, it's okay. urban settings, or rural to rural, even within the same urban environment. External trafficking, as you see now, that as we mentioned earlier, is transported across national borders. So we have maybe from Nigeria going to another country, and right now we have this increase of um, external trafficking going to the Middle East. Middle East in terms of Dubai, Saudi Arabia, there's so many, Lebanon, Malaysia, so many cases coming up from those places. We also have within African countries. You go around, somebody wants to try, want to have been trafficked of all places. Nigeria is not still better than Cote d'Ivoire or Benin. But yet, people are still being trafficked to those countries. Imagine, okay, Nigeria is better than those countries. Even within the same rural environment, the same village community. Trafficking takes place there. So um, now we have on that form, as we had mentioned. Sorry. We have what we refer to as online trafficking, cyber sex trafficking, virtual trafficking. Can somebody from your own understanding of these concepts, can you share with us what you think virtual trafficking or cyber sex trafficking and online trafficking is? There is. Um, Joyce. Uh, okay. I, I want to say. Or cyber sex trafficking. So me, I feel it is trafficking become traffickers realize that. They can really easier in a way to get people online. And they were like, yes, let's do this. And they started spreading, spreading online. And funny enough, they started exploiting on people my age, people who at this point in their lives are going through pigata changes and they are like, I'm not comfortable with my body. Um I, I don't I don't I don't like what I see. Um I this this girl's Instagram account is he has so many followers. They target people like that who they see are, uh, especially okay on Instagram now. If they see people, if they see someone following at least like about like 16 different celebrities at the same time and posting comments on it about how how beautiful they are or just keeping on complimenting them. Of course, these celebrities won't see them, but the traffickers see them and identify them. Then they start tracking them. 
Next thing they start talking to them, they give them the assurance that they want, they give them the security they feel they, they need. And just like that, they, are, they have been recruited. Next thing you see them trying to meet up with them or you see them sending, up, sending them up hips to dress better or do better. And just, just, just like that, the person disappears. Next thing we hear of the person, we okay. next thing we hear the person, the person is on our way abroad or something. Okay, thank you. That's what I feel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Okay. We're going to go back to discuss cyber sex or virtual trafficking, but I would like us to identify, looking at virtual trafficking now, let's try to identify the three elements on trafficking in it from it and this one we're going to do in a case study ahead so let's continue so i'm going to be looking at trends of trafficking in nigeria here so in nigeria we've all identified that yes we all agree with me that trafficking takes place in nigeria and let's look at what is the common trends now in nigeria in Nigeria, in 2001, I mean, the Palermo Protocol, which is the AKA for UNTOC, which whereby UNTOC is the United Nations Convention on Transnational Organized Crime. I know we had this for three tests. So that UNTOC, United Nations Convention on Transnational Organized Crime, the AKA Palermo Protocol. The Palermo there is where is the country where is the town, I don't know the country right now, sorry, where the protocol, where they um, finalized the protocol amongst them. So in, in 2001, Nigeria adopted the Parliament Protocol on the definition of trafficking, and this was universally accepted. So the Parliament Protocol in 2001, just with every other country that accept that, ratified, that accepted the protocol, the definition of trafficking was defined. And the trafficking, the definition we had said earlier on, if you go to America today, if you go to any other country that has adopted the Parliament Protocol, you get to see that it's the same thing. So, and also as building up as advocates, it's good for us to start knowing what all these protocols are, what the conventions are. So, and also in going further, in Nigeria, Nigeria is a country of source. When we say a country of source in terms of trafficking, that thing. Okay, let me, I'll ask first, I'll leave it first. So Nigeria is a, is a country of source, is a country of transit, and is a country of destination in terms of human trafficking. So when I mean, when we get to hear that, oh, Nigeria is a country of source, the country of transit, the country of destination, what does this, um, what does this tell us? Who can, from your own understanding, who can share with us? Aisha, are you in the house? Aisha, we'd like to hear from you. Joyce, we'd like to hear from you. Ferris, we'd like to hear from you. We can leave our microphones unmuted if open, if we are in a quiet environment. As it speaks to you, remember no answer is wrong. Just share what comes okay. to your mind. Joyce, thank you. Okay. To you. okay, so I would I think I will say something on the Nigeria is first. Yeah, okay. So from my understanding, like Nigeria being is first, I think Nigeria is like a, a zone or an active zone for you know for trafficking or yes. Or abducting, kidnapping. Yes, so that's, I think that's my understanding of Nigeria being first. Okay. Thank you. Any other person who wants to try any other sessions? Any thanks? Therese, Aisha, are you still yeah. in the house? Okay. Uh, for me, Nigeria being the source is. Uh, for me, Nigeria being the source is that a uh, lot of people in Nigeria have taken this as a means of a livelihood to them. Like they, they see it as um, a normal job 
a normal job for them. They don't see anything wrong with, with it. So I think that's how they say Nigeria is, is okay. the source. Okay. Okay. Would anybody like to take um, transit and destination? Yeah, I want to take transit. Um, I feel that okay. traffickers in Nigeria have decided that rather than just taking people, rather than just taking people, why not be in the business of moving traffickers to their destination? Let's get these traffickers to where they are, where they are. needed and those who are buying and those who are supplying that's what I, th I feel like nigeria has decided to become one of the major forces to be moving people left right and center on the globe thank you those who are buying and those who are selling okay so let's see anybody destination country from your own things, your own, your own I would like to take destina okay. destination country. Okay, to me, I feel like why Nigeria is also a source from which they get victims is also like where they bring the victims to. Because we can see um examples from countries like Togo, Bene. They um they traffic people from those countries to Nigeria. So we can also see Nigeria is like where they also bring people to. Okay. Thank you very much. You've all done well. So, so I'll, I'm going to give you guys a thumbs up for that. So you've explained that yourself. Nigeria being a source, a transit and a destination country. So Nigeria is a source whereby we gather here, it, um, traffickers come to pick up victims from here. A transit whereby Nigeria is a web for pass through. So for instance, now those people who want to look at the map of Nigeria, sorry, we don't, I, I should have gotten that in my slide so you can um, visualize this. So we have the map of Nigeria now. And we have some, and the northern part of Nigeria, those Sokoto and the rest, can lead to Libya, because Libya is a road that can lead to the Mediterranean and lead into Italy. So you can see persons who maybe from Togo or pass through Nigeria and pass through our northern states and um, pass through Nigeria. Then from there, they link up to another country and continue their journey. That's the same way. That's what makes it so transit country by that passing through. In the destination country, as explained by Aisha, where you have um, traffic between some other countries are being brought into our country. So unlike some, in some countries, in some countries unlike Nigeria, they're either just only a transit country or either just a source country or a destination country. But here in Nigeria, we have the three of them. That what makes trafficking very alarming to us. And there's no state in Nigeria that will say they are free of trafficking. Sadly, once more, all the 36 states in Nigeria and the FCK are endemic. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a crisis. It should be a form of a state of emergency right now when it comes to trafficking and persons. And many persons in Nigeria, most of the trafficking we see, they are sexually exploited. Although we also have cases of forced labor, all these terms will be explained them in the next slide. We also have cases of forced labor. What makes one, one interesting trend about trafficking in Nigeria is that majority of the traffic victims, majority, not in everyone, majority of the traffic persons, they share something in common. Most persons don't have formal education. Second is that many other persons, they have this desire to travel to make a better living. They want to Japa. I believe many of us here want to Japa. So that desire to Japa. I know, I, I believe, I hope I'm speaking the same language with us here. We all know the meaning of Japa, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. If blessing who is in France, no Japa. I also believe those of us here in Nigeria know the meaning of Japa. So, okay. So they all want to Japa. And under one, what under um, um, one common factor is that there's a level of trust. So when you trust an intermediary, 
to facilitate migration process. So I don't worry. I have one uncle. I want to have my uncle is going to, or my aunt is going to take care of all my migration. He's going to take care of all my papers or just be in my house. My papers will just come to me without even going to um, to do biometric or visa or anything. My documents will come to me. So you can see that willingness to trust an intermediary to facilitate migration process on their behalf exposes their vulnerability to trafficking. One huge factor, despite um, for I won't use poverty as a case right now. One huge factor is that the Nigeria of today celebrates richness, celebrates um, wealth, rich people, regardless of where that money is coming from. If if everyone if everyone wants a source of wealth wants to be acknowledged in the society and the society whereby nobody is going to ask questions or be interested in saying, okay, fine, let me be let me be a trafficker or let me start exploiting people. And that's because the reason why I said I'm not going to use poverty is because one might one might be poor, but you still have that level of dignity in you know. However, we have those who are rich in quotes, but that level of dignity is not there, and they, are, they, see, they, they become what traffic attacks. But I, I won't dispute the fact that poverty has a, a factor whereby the people are vulnerable. So poverty does have a role to play. But in this context right now, we have our value system has shifted, whereby the rich, this richness wealth is celebrated without questioning. If today, if, if today the reverse is the case, whereby Every for, for everyone who has is or who is perceived to be wealthy, they ask them, What is the source of your wealth? How did you get your wealth? And they can say, Oh, I did this legitimate business, I did this legitimate business, and we respect their person and not the money. No one will be trying to do a fast one or even their brother and sisters, because we have brothers, sisters, boyfriend, girlfriends, parents being actors on trafficking in persons. So that's, that's very sad, but that's the reality. Now we'll be looking at the forms of trafficking now. Emerging forms of trafficking, forms of trafficking in terms of trafficking persons, exploitation and the rest. How many of us are familiar with the equal remodels case that's ongoing in the United Kingdom? Let me know those who listen to me. If you are, just raise up your hands. If you use your reaction button, if you are familiar with the case of Ike Ikure Ramadu, Ike Ikure Ramadu is the deputy, was, was the senator and was once the deputy senate president of Nigeria. That took okay. a little boy from Nigeria yes, to avert the speed in it, right? Yes, that's the line, yes. Okay, well, how many of us have you heard? Okay, yes, yeah. so thank you very much. Blessing for sharing more life and that. And that form of that form of trafficking that was was that was taking place is what is referred to as organ trafficking. That is harvesting of tissues, cells, and organs. In the in UNTOC, let me just share this on UNTOC, which is the UN Convention on Transnational Against on Transnational Organized Crime. The transnational organized crime means that trafficking. The, I know I talked about the trends of trafficking in Nigeria. But let me just make it clear that trafficking is not a Nigeria issue. It's not an Africa. Trafficking is not a Nigerian issue. It's not an African issue. It is transnational. It's caused across all the countries in, in the world. That what makes it transnational. Then it's not just a crime. It's an organized crime. In the sense that from just only blessing explanation, no. Somebody goes to the village and recruits. That is one person. Do not transfer that child to somebody. Do not transfer that child to somebody. That's another person. Before you now get to the final person, the child is going to be working for. That is that more than one person has been involved in facilitating this crime. So that's what makes it an organized crime, whereby you have three, four persons. So it's like a syndicate. So if you ever hear the word syndicate, means people gather 
group of persons involved in crime. So that makes it an organized crime. And in yeah, the organized trafficking that takes place. Go ahead, Blessing. Yeah, we, uh, for that, we are very familiar with that here in Europe. Bringing somebody from Nigeria, transfer the person to someone in Italy. From Italy, you transfer the person to France, to another person again. Whereby these people, they are all eating from this person, collecting money from this person, just one person. And maybe France is not even the destination of the person. You are still going to take him or her to Spain or Belgium. Those people that he or she will still go and meet, they, they will still collect. So uh, that is is really evil for me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how we can see how organized it is. So and that's why you might say, oh, why is it just difficult to to stop trafficking? You can see the number of persons, the number of the number of persons who are involved from one country. So it is a syndicate. So harvesting of tissue cells and organs in in countries where you have laws against organ harvesting, the fact that you have the intention of buying an organ is already a crime. You bring somebody to come to collect the person's organ to come and donate. When the person is not a close blood relations or maybe a, a close relation of the person, that's a crime. So you can see. Any, 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 any act or attempt to harvest somebody's organ or cells or you buying or you facilitating the process, that makes it a crime. Then we have sales of human baby fracturing. You heard about cases whereby people will gather together in a, they'll, they'll gather young girls or they'll gather women and possibly get somebody to impregnate them. Then um, when the babies are born, they now start selling the babies to their highest bidder. That is baby factory. That's a lot too, is a form of trafficking person because you are exploiting the women and the money that is even being paid for the child, for instance, is not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, most of the cases doesn't even go 100% to them. However, in Nigeria, it's wrong for you to sell a baby. So you have baby factory. Then I'll come back to child pornography. So recruitment and use of children in armed conflict. Um, where we have in not maybe not, not necessarily in Nigeria, but in other countries where you have conflict in a very in very high um, in taking place, you see children who are being recruited, who are being taken to go and come um, um, children militia groups in into making them giving them arms. That's also a form of armed conflict because those who are for, well, well, let me look at Boko Haram, for instance. When you take a child to go and start fighting Boko Haram crisis, that is exploitation. And trafficking for labor through contracts with labor agents. We see so many, so many um, labor or workforce team who are online advertising for work or who are doing um, contract work. Or even sometimes we will also have. Um, uh, um, house hops or things like that. Contracts work. Oh, you do the work, you do the work. They don't give you the money directly. They give it to somebody else. And you are being, like, I'll link up trafficking for labor through contracts with labor agents and domestic service. Or you are being, or you are being, um, you're, you are being exploited and you are being exploited. That is trafficking for labor through contracts or contract agents. Or even with this contract for labor agents. We have situations whereby we have people who share their experiences who have traveled to the Middle East. Middle East in terms of Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and you report that ah, I was trafficked there, I was taught I'm going to be doing a child, I'm going to be a teacher, I'll be teaching the children English and things like that. Then I went through a a, a contract for more about this. I forgot what they call them now. Contractors, labor um I went through an agent. They only said I went through an agent, and the agent told me I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Unfortunately, when I went, when I went there, the work I was asked to do was different. So that's if one can get trafficked through such. Then illicit adoption, illicit adoption, whereby people have orphanage homes and do irregular forms of adoption process there. Illicit adoption, then domestic servitude. 
we all know what domestic for many, many most of our ex explanations here they will all extend one form or the other to domestic what domestic servitude is when we say domestic servitude it also mean in terms of our households households is half soft bad we are going to get back to that discussion what at what point is, is exploitation taking place in domestic servitude so i'm going to i want to get our own feedback from that after explaining what it is then begging you see so many beggars on the road you feel pity for them it's it's good we're empathetic but the majority of beggars who are on the streets are not there on their own view on the saying that they've, they've experienced they're experiencing hardships and actually going there to beg unfortunately many of them are victims of trafficking who have been carried from one place to the other and we that's why you will see persons with disabilities who are advocating right now say, don't use us for begging. We told a parent who, or, or, uh, who has a child with a disability, possibly in your rural environment, and would that take them to the urban city and um, after promising good after promising good life for them or education for them, or some places even lie and say that the government has um, resources or revenue for those to, um, to equip them, to empower them. And with open hearts, they give their children or their loved ones who have some own form of disability. And before you know it, they're using them, they're exploiting them. So begging is also a form of exploitation. First marriage, yes. You say first marriage, well, I'm about as a child, a first marriage, whereby you have any child marriage, a form of exploitation. Is that, when, let's, let's go back to our, elements we're using our element of um of trafficking to identify how first marriage is here yeah. so we have first marriage taking place how does first marriage relate to trafficking in persons please open um remove your open your microphones i mean how does first marriage how is first marriage when you say first marriage let's guys um child early child marriage how is it a form of Human trafficking. The, yeah, I would say it's a it's a form of human trafficking because lots of the child are not willing to to go into the marriage, and maybe the parents are are owing they are indebted to the person they want to give the child to. In form of exchanging the child with with a large sum of money or even a piece of land for a survivor. So. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's identify the act, the mean there. Okay. Um, the act there is harboring. The act there is harboring. Okay. And um, the mean is the, the, uh, the meaning is true coercion, then the purpose is solely for exploitation. Because only God knows why you want a young girl on your bed. Okay, okay. Thank you. I can see I, this is because I, it's, it's interesting um, that you all have come to understand the elements of trafficking. So let's look at bounded labor. Now, I won't speak. So let's just on our own identify. Okay, it can either be trained on the act or the means, but we all know the aim is the purpose is exploitation. So bonded labor, bonded labor could um in another word, forced labor. So when we talk about trafficking in persons, the very first thought that comes to our mind is sexual exploitation, using them for sex sex work and the rest. But when you take when when you take when people are being um are being exploited through hard labor. Is also cost labor. Is also a form of trafficking. Let's look at the situation whereby we have in mining, in mining environment, where in, in, in states where you have mines ongoing, we tend to see so many young people, even not just young people, adults who are there working in the mines, working in very hard, hard, um, hard conditions. And sometimes if you even inquire, they're not from within that environment. So that's also what forced labor. They also have trafficking through sports. 
we have i would like us to well, after this session please go to um, after today's session go to gpi's youtube channel we have short videos on on trafficking there i'll just give us a short scenario of one of these um scenario. Or, or trafficking through sports you tell somebody oh this child is so talented in sport i'm going to take you to um you're going to compete in the olympics before you know it, open-minded, open. And as we said earlier on, the actors of trafficking are persons we know, persons we trust. Because if somebody that is an outsider comes and tell you, oh, let your sister come with me, you, a, you I don't know you before, from before. So most times, most of the actors of trafficking, of trafficking are those who pe people are very comfortable with, whom they place high esteem on. So trafficking through sports, then orphanage trafficking. That's some orphanage homes whereby they put the, um, they have children there and they'll tell you that oh we're running orphanages, but then people of people of goodwill will now come and start donating, they use it for donation process and um, purpose, give things, but 90% of the things that are being given are not used for the upkeep of those children. Rather, they're being sold or used for something different. They're being sold. So those children in that orphanage homes are victims of human trafficking. Yeah. Any questions? Is it possible? It's possible like that. So yes, it is. Orphanage trafficking is a form of trafficking that sometimes we see some orphanage homes and possibly if you if you if you if we decide to do thorough investigation and go visit them on because normally if you want to pay a visit or a body wants to come and see the children and the rest, you you pre-inform them. So when you pre-inform them, they prepare the children and they might be looking their best. Or go there on a random day. What happens there? Okay, let's look at, for those of us who are familiar with the uh, movie Annie. Who has watched the movie Annie before? The recent um, version of the movie has Jimmy Fox in it. Like a musical. Okay. Williams, you've, you've watched it. Can you? Yeah, can I have. You I the old one and the new one. I, okay. So, from the description, can you can you picture orphanage trafficking there? Clearly, foster homes in the U.S. are used to, especially when children over the age of eighteen go off the system because they are already um older than the system. Foster, they, they just majority of them disappear. Now, where do they disappear to? We find out later if we decide to investigate that some of them are taken to, are just being sold off to various people for various purposes, and it's disheartening. Okay, thank you, um, Jimmy. Thank you, Williams, for sharing. And um, be beyond just beyond just that, you know, orphanage home is meant to be like a a replica of a home for those children. Sadly, we tend to see exploitative behaviors happening there. Children might even be given work beyond their what their age um for their age requirements, their age capacity. We have exploitative cases ongoing there, sexual, physical, psychological. Even as much as a child is in an orphanage home, she needs to be loved and taken care of and feel some connection. But not all orphanages are like that. So some orphanages are built just to exploit the children for their own good and not for the purpose and the well-being of the children. So that's a form of trafficking. Any question? Okay. So we'll just, if there's none, we'll go ahead. When we see direct recruitment by traffickers, um, talking about the methods in which trafficking, um, traffickers use to recruit, the kind that are um, used directly by traffickers, it can be recruitment by agents, that agents so. So the way you have agents for, the way you have um, um, 
do you have agents for Christ or to go and evangelize and win souls? That's the same way these people go out to to win victims. And you also have pressure by parents, guidance. When you see a parent telling the child, and telling the child, ah, you see the condition we are living in. Just go now. Go and help us. Go and do this. Go and do that. At the detriment of the person. So you can see pressure comes up. They have abduction or kidnapping, as um, Therese has shared in a, somebody had shared in their diagram. So let's look at this case study. Can somebody read for us, please? A 41 years old cardinal vulnerable teenager from Nigeria, Ghana to Togo, Ghana and Togo, into sending in image and performing sexual acts in front of webcam. He later transferred those images to others like himself and other teenagers with further manipulated to send more image from the purpose of future exploitation and abuse discourse. Okay. So I believe we all read along with her. Is anyone who would like to discuss, to share? Uh, can can you explain okay. this? Sorry. Can you explain better okay. for? Okay, so so we have an adult here who has been possibly chatting with teenagers from different countries, and in chatting with them, they become so comfortable in chatting with them. And the next thing he requests for send me a picture of yourself. And from a very nice picture, all clothed up, Messi said, okay, send me a picture of you blowing a kiss. Before you know it, send me a picture of you naked and subsequently become, and with the use of, after transferring those pictures, with the use of threat and say, ah, now you sent me these pictures. If you don't send me more, I'm going to expose you. I'm going to sell your pictures out. I'm going to show it. I'm going to report to you and the rest. I would like to ask us now, is there a form of trafficking here? But I thought this is supposed to be called a blackmail. Okay. It's no, no, no problem. Any other question, your thoughts? So is that trafficking there? Williams, Aisha. Um, yes. Yes, yes. I, I believe there's trafficking there. Cyber sex trafficking. And he, he started off, he, he looked for vulnerable pe um, people he could you he could co he could end up coercing then started deceiving them and by the time they got comfortable with it and comfortable with the relationship they had with the man the man now decided to blackmail them and as such it's he's sexually exploiting them because he could tell them to send him a video of them um, having sex or something. So, uh, yes, I believe it's tra trafficking. Okay. There's trafficking there. Okay. Aisha? Yes, ma'am. Joyce? I believe there's also a form of trafficking there. The, the virtual... Um, the virtual trafficking, yes. Because the action demand did was like so it's also a form of sexual exploitation exploiting the pictures they sent to him by transferring to other 
people that are like him. Yeah, I think it's a form of virtual trafficking. Joyce, your thoughts? Hello, Joyce, your thoughts? Okay, I think Joyce is not with us at the moment. Okay. Yes, I am. Um, I I I appreciated Blessing's comment. I'll say, is that not blackmail? And at what point the trafficking takes place? At what point the exploitation takes place? It's just a blackmail. So I'm going to read to us here a case from the Panama Protocol. It says, even when the recruitment, transfer, harboring, and receipt of children for the purposes of exploitation is online, each act and subsequent viewing and sharing of acts involves the abuse of a real child. For a child, a child has not reached, a child is below 18 years and has not reached the age of consent. So you can't say the child cons gave me permission or the child on his or her own decided to share their pictures with me. And for every time this is being done, you're actually abusing the child. So that's where exploitation comes in. If it was even ending there, it could have also been, hey, it had just been okay. But sometimes we tend to see that these pictures and these images are sold on the dark web. So somebody is out there making money. Monkey, they work. Complete it yourself. Okay. So bless are you with me? Yes, I understand better now. I understand better, thank you. So we can see how online trafficking works now, but it's online, it's not just blackmailing the person. Even if the even if the the pictures are not being sold on the black web, the person is using the pictures for a form of satisfaction at the other person's inconvenience. A child doesn't even, a child doesn't even have the legal right to show such things. And in Nigeria Cybercrime Act, any adult that's involved in um, involved in any sexual conversation through technology, social media and the rest, so any child has once been caught, this good person has, I can't remember that many years in prison that the person is going to spend. So it's even against the law, as it says. So exploitation, as, as we've seen, as sex trafficking, as we've seen, has gone just has gone beyond just has gone beyond borders. So it's not what we see online. And just like we have in um, in physical in um, as I'm not calling it physical trafficking. Just like we see um, in internet trafficking and external trafficking. We have situations where, in, just like in, just like in internet external trafficking, in online trafficking too, we see this level of trust, which we call grooming, is being built, whereby whoever the person is chatting with, you feel very comfortable in chatting with the person. You feel comfortable in chatting with the person. Do not think you have like minds. That's what we term grooming. Um, by the time grooming has been done, trust has been built. The person is now what's being forced is now open to sharing, and before you know it, can even turn to initial and um, to means of threats. Remember, remember in the element of trafficking, we had mentioned threats, the coercion, all these elements being ticked makes it a form of trafficking. So we'll continue. Okay, before we go on to migration, let me also share that. When it comes to trafficking online, or use of technology to traffic online, you know, from the different elements we mentioned, which is the acts, the means, and the purpose. Trafficking can actually start mm -hmm. through um, social media online, but can might not end with exploitation, in the sense that 
I go online to start recruiting people or to start convincing people or to start learning people about um it could be through jobs or through anything or through um modeling business, anything. People feel comfortable and people sign up. I make it all feel so legit. Then before you know it, I might abduct those people when they come over. And my time abduction comes comes and, and maybe abduction would have transported them and how about them? They might get I might they not me. The, the perpetrators might now decide to kill the persons, harvest their organs, harvest their organs, or transfer them for sex, sex exploitation, or for first labor, or for domestic service. So they won't take, they won't take them for begging, possibly drug them, advise them for begging, or for something that exploiting them. So you can see here by technology started the process, but it didn't end it. So the purpose of exploitation did not involve technology, but the other two elements were captured in it. In the other regard, as we can start, we can in, for this room, for this case study, which we just discussed, we can see the three elements being factored in whereby at the end of the day, exploitation took place through technology, through online, through the media, through social media, or technological means. So um through for virtual um online trafficking. Can, you can have the act and the means through online, but it might not end to exploitation through online. When it comes to cyber sex trafficking, online sex trafficking, exploitation is being done online. Any question? Any contribution? Before I move on to my question. Okay. So for migration, we've all identified that migration means we want to, somebody should tell us, in our local parlance means this. Migration is you want to what? Jan, you want to jackpot. You want to jackpot, exactly. But what does, we all know that migration is moving from one place to the other to live, work, or to uh, um to leave work, greener pastures for schooling. It is done. You can do it by yourself, or you can do it with the help of another person. In migration, we have to term irregular migration. Irregular migration. This means when your documentation process is not is not complete, is not is not um is not legal with the standard of that country's own. So I'm moving from borders of countries without your possession of documents that indicates your that indicate that you've been given permission to be in that country. So when you when you get entrance into a country by um, legitimate means, you are going to be having legal documents to be in that country. And also a migration can also become irregular. When I leave Nigeria, so possibly travel to the UK with a maybe a visit visa of two weeks. Two weeks have extended, two weeks have passed. I'm meant to have come back to Nigeria, but I find ways to be hiding myself because my papers are not complete. That makes my migration irregular. In the past, we used to have the term illegal migration. I say a migration is legal or illegal. But right now, the term legal there has been removed, has not been used to describe a, a migration because when you say illegal, it means that when you when the first when you first when time anytime you hear illegal, the first thing that comes to your mind is something evil, something bad has been done. However, when it comes to migration, what is being what is what is wrong there is that it's more of the administrative process of documentation. And not the person. So, in our discussions, we should try to restrict ourselves, refrain ourselves from using the word illegal migration or illegal migrants, but rather irregular migration. So, what are the steps for us to be regular migrants or to be migrants that have the um, actual documentation? Before you have to travel to any country, 
it's best for you to know what who, um, the country, the people, the culture, the attitudes in that country. If you want to go there for school, know what the school, you should already do your own homework of identifying the school and things like that. So you should also be doing visits, visit the embassy to know what the regulations for migration are. You can go personally to the Nigeria, you go, to, go and get your passport, you contact the embassy, you check the address and the document to confirm that. If somebody has done things for you, for instance, now um, you want to travel, you want to travel out of the country and paper was being done by, for you by someone, it's, you should take the paint, you want to check out what what the person has written in those documents, the document that came to you, are they, are they, are they authentic? Do the details correspond to your own details? And before you sign any contracts, always make sure you read them properly. If you are going to a country and you don't speak English, learn the basic language like top, police, embassy, phone number and addresses. Don't say I have the numbers stored on my phones. You should memorize them. Maybe you get um, to your destination country, you contact your family members. Thank God now we have a form of, if you have internet access to internet, you can be sharing your location as the journey is ongoing. Then you register with your embassy or consulate in the country you are of in your destination country. Then for any documents you have, keep the copies of your passports, your passport front page, and other documents that is known to you alone. You keep them. So what happens when somebody does not migrate? Um, legally. I'll leave that to us to answer. So, anyone who likes to share, what happens when you don't migrate legally? Anybody? You stand the fear of being abducted, number one, being um, deported. I'm being um, scammed. Okay. And then because the uh, okay. Any other person? Oh, if you don't regulate your go ahead. Yeah, okay. So if you don't have sorry, can you come again with the next question? Okay, please mind who is speaking. Oh, oh sorry, this is Joyce. Okay, Joyce. Joyce. So if you don't if you don't yeah. if you don't migrate with the right document, what can happen? Okay, if you do not migrate with the right documents, okay, first of all, I think you start the first thing that that will happen to you is just here and you then have to try to adopt other like negative coping mechanisms just to stay or avoid being arrested and then it exposes you to you know, to you being vulnerable to people that exploit people just so that you can avoid the yeah. Let's just run. thank you guys. So let's run through what we have here. So sorry. Okay. So at the end of the day, when when we have a high level of irregular mi migration, irregular migrants, it affects the country's economy, the country of destination where we are all running to, because they cannot plan. We can't make solutions for economic problems because they have so many undocumented migrants or undocumented um, city, um, persons living in their country. And also, as um, Blessing had mentioned, you can get deported anytime. So you might be thinking you're walking off really and everything. There was a documentary I watched one day, and this man has been, a, he man is, he has been an illegal migrant for years. And the day he got deported, he couldn't even take home anything. So you just see yourself just living like that. And all the years and efforts put in that, put in, would all be gone. And the fear that 
the fact that my get deported can cause ill health. So you, you, are in, you are in a country, you can't plan ahead, you can't plan for yourself, you can't focus for the next five years, this is my long term goals and the rest. Because you know that once you are caught, you can be you can be deported in any seconds. You can't do good jobs, it makes you susceptible to traffickers and increases your vulnerability. You get exploited by employees because they know that more, you can always use that as a threat against you. So in conclusion is that when it comes to trafficking, we have to think of new ways and innovative ways to address the common problem, especially by ensuring that both steps are taken to prosecute offenders, no matter their status in the society, and ensuring that victims are treated with dignity. So I'm happy with the fact that tomorrow I'm going to be discussing more about victim support and our facilitator is going to be doing that. And from what we've all gotten today, I want to strongly believe that we can all advocate more and give rights information in terms of trafficking in persons. I'd like us to do a poll from I like us to do a poll, and I'm going to be launching it now. All you have to do is when you, when you get when you see the question, just pick the answer. Okay. It's been launched. This was from our pre test, one of our pre test questions. So which of these do you consider human trafficking? It's multiple choice, so you can choose more than one. Can we see the poll on our screens? Please let's all let's all be involved in the poll. We're ending the poll now. Okay. So, so I'd like all of us to give ourselves a GPI clap. We, we got the answers right. And I'm happy that um, we were able to identify trafficking that took place in the different options. Thank you very much. And I'll leave this room for questions and answers. The floor is open to you. Thank you. Okay, no question.
Okay, thank you, Loretta. I, I was speaking, but my mic was mute. Thank you so much for that amazing session. I believe that Loretta deserves a GPI clap. Who is ready to give Loretta a GPI clap? Who is ready? Who is ready? <laughs> Loretta, I don't know if you are ready, but we are ready. And we want you to stand up. As the culture is, we want you to stand up, you know, and we are going to give you a massive GPI clap. I want you to dance for us. Okay, the spotlight is on you. We want to see you. We want to see you. Okay, so education. Am I the one clapping? Don't no. Now we no. can see you. Education. Empowerment. Action. You have done well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that wonderful session. It was power packed. In fact, I, I really learned a lot personally. Thank you so much for bringing that, you know, um, those wonderful slides together to teach us to, uh, and thank you for the engaging session as, as well. Thank you so much. So is there any question? We have, uh, we are far gone. Um, we are far gone. Is there any question from anybody concerning all that Loretta has taught us today? Is there any question? No question for me. Oh, that means that Loretta did well. That means she killed it. The way they say, say she killed it. You know, that means yeah. she killed it. All right, I think Blessing wants to say something. All right. Uh, she did because uh, that arboring, I was really confused about that. But now mm. she explained everything mm. clearly mm. to me and I understood the crime that the person has committed by arboring that person. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm well understood now. I understand. Thank, thank you. So you. Thank you very much. She's such a wonderful facilitator. I think she deserves another GPI club. Let's go. <laughs> Education. Empowerment. Action. You have done well. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Teresa, you want to say something? Go ahead. Um, 